Hi guys, it's Vin with Boris Effects, and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to create these Doctor Who inspired titles in Vegas using only Title Studio in Continuum 2019. The focus will not be on creating the time vortex that you see here in the background. We're going to only focus on creating the titles, so if you'd like to learn how to create your own 10th Doctor style time vortex, well I'll provide some links a bit later on to show you how to make the basic ones seen here, and possibly some more timey wimey twisty ones which will require After Effects, but for now, let's break down this 13th Doctor title effect using only one plugin, Title Studio. Now if you saw my previous sci-fi title tutorial for After Effects, you'll know that we had to add many of the effects such as glows and light sweeps to the title effect outside of the Title Studio UI. While we can certainly get good results in any host this way, adding additional tracks and stacking effects can very quickly cause things to slow down as your computer tries to process all the various layers. But with Continuum 2019, we can now do all of this from within Title Studio itself, meaning our host is only processing a single effect. So the glows that you see here, the light sweep and even the blurring are all done inside of a single instance of Title Studio. Now to do all of this, you will of course need to make sure that you have the Continuum 2019 upgrade, and there will be a link at the end of this tutorial if you'd like to download a free upgrade or trial. Now the 13th Doctor's logo uses a modified version of Futura, and while Futura Lite doesn't have the little bits on the tops of the letters seen here in the original logo, it should give you some pretty decent results. Okay, to begin with, let's go ahead and apply Title Studio to our clip. As always, you can double up on the video clip or place Title Studio on a generator on the track above our Vortex clip. Remember that whatever layer Title Studio is applied to, it's going to get blown away by Alpha. Now what I want to do is I'm going to launch Title Studio, and once the UI opens, the first thing I want to do is get rid of that default text. In theory, I could use it, but I want to show you something new to Continuum 2019. In the past, if I wanted to create text, I'd have to go down here, create a new text object, come up here to the text generator window, and enter all my info. And of course I can still do this, but Continuum 2019 introduces this handy text tool. By selecting the tool, I can click anywhere in the comp window and create my text. Switching back to the arrow tool, I can position it anywhere I want. If I need to be specific, I can enable guides, and by dragging from the ruler, I can set the guides, and my text will automatically snap to them. Now this is handy when making lower thirds or just to make sure that the text goes exactly where I want it to. Now if you ever want to delete a guide, just drag it back up to the ruler. The text tool also allows me to select either the whole text or a portion of it. Any changes I make in the generator window will only affect the selected text. Now if I highlight the whole thing, I can make a few changes. First off, let's change that font to Futura Lite and set the font size to about 72. I also want to adjust the tracking a bit to spread those letters out. Now when using my text tool, what I want to do is select that H and delete it. If we look at the original logo, there's some interesting things going on. You can see here that the vertical parts of the letter are stretched and offset, and a horizontal bar animates in to complete the H. So to replicate that, what I actually want to do is replace the H with two I's. Now if you opt not to use Futura, just make sure that whatever font you do use is sans serif, otherwise it's not really going to look right. Using my text tool, I'm going to select the left one. By adjusting the style, scale, Y, and baseline, I can stretch and position it. The idea is to get it elongated and offset from the main text. I'm just going to go and nudge it until the top of the letter lines up with the top of the next one, and then I'm going to do the same for the other one, making sure that the bottom lines up with the bottom of the next letter. It's worth mentioning that you can still do a lot of this selection from the text generator window, but personally I find this workflow to be a bit easier since I tend to work in AE a lot and this is pretty much how you would do that, but it's up to you of course. Okay, with that done, let's start getting this looking a bit more like the logo. Now I'm going to change the track shape to extrusion and then head up to the controls window to tweak a few things. First off, I'm going to knock that extrusion down to zero, which may seem counterintuitive since we just made an extruded object. You can add some extrusion if you want, but personally I'm not going to use it. What I do want though is the ability to adjust the beveling and materials which require that the object itself be extruded. So with that in mind, let's set the bevel to straight and adjust the beveling amount and depth just a bit. But the most important thing to do is increase the edge contract parameter. This will contract the shape of the letters a bit, but don't go too crazy or you can get some really unwelcome results. Around 2.59 works for me, but feel free to experiment with your settings to create something that's unique to you. 
The next thing that I want to do is open up my Material Styles palette. Now I can do this from the Windows menu, and if you don't like the position of the window when it opens, feel free to just drag it anywhere in the layout. I like to keep all my controls up here. So the Material Styles palette has been updated for Continuum 2019, and in addition to hundreds of new textures and presets, materials are now easier to inspect, manipulate, and preview. Feel free to experiment with all the various materials and textures, but for me, I'm going to go with the metallic category and select rusted metal. Okay, that looks good. Now let's select that track and duplicate it. What we want to do is create and animate that horizontal part of the H. Select all the text and let's change it to a dash mark. This is going to be the basis of our horizontal bar. In fact, let's also adjust the horizontal skew a bit to stretch it out. Okay, that looks good. Now with our horizontal bar selected, let's move our CTI to around 15 frames. And what we want to do is animate the dash on to form the stylized H. At frame 15, I'm going to set a decelerate keyframe and move that dash right off the screen. Then I'm going to move forward a few frames and give it a hold keyframe at its final position. Oh, uh, make sure that the horizontal track is at the bottom of the stack so that it animates in behind the text. If we were working in a 3D composition, we could do some interesting animations here, but the IP shaders we'll be using require that our composition be too deep. So just drag that dash track down to the bottom if needed. Okay, now for the good stuff. IP shaders. What are they and why are they awesome? Well, IP shaders are effect filters that you can apply to your scene, an object, or a texture. Glows, blurs, keying, light rays, wipes, and many more effects are available from within Tidal Studio. They allow you to create complex, realistic effects in real time. Different looks can be created depending upon where in the stack the shader is placed. Since the shader placement is so important, let's take a moment to look at what I mean by this before we move on. Here I have two text objects, flat text and an extruded object with material texture. Now different shaders are going to produce different effects and some effects are better suited to different tracks, so again, feel free to experiment to create unique effects. For this example, what I want to do is take a linear 2D shader and apply it directly to my scene. Now you'll notice that when I do, everything in the scene begins to ripple. The shader is affecting everything that is placed below it in the stack. So if I place it between the two text objects, only the object below it will be affected. Since applying it at a scene level affects every object in the stack, any object I create below this point will also be affected. However, if I drag the shader directly onto my text track, it's only going to affect the track itself. No matter what appears below the track in the timeline, only my track will be affected. Now here's something even cooler. Not only can I apply a shader to an object like text, I can also apply it directly to the material itself. In this case, when the shader is applied to the text, my whole text is affected. But, if I open up the material track and drag it down to the material, voila! With the ripple applied to the material, the text remains static, but we get this really cool liquid effect. Now, as I mentioned, different shaders are going to provide different degrees of usefulness when you do this, but it's a cool trick to create some really interesting effects. Okay, like I said, that's all cool, but let's get back to creating our title effect. The first thing I want to do is add a light sweep to our main text. If I have the track selected when I select the shader, it will automatically add it to the track. Otherwise, I can always just drag it where I want it. Now, there are a few options available to me here, and I can either select a regular light sweep or a noisy one. The noisy light sweep animates noise across it and is really good for creating lower third backgrounds or foggy effects. We're going to come back to it later, but for this, for right now, I'm going to keep it on a regular light sweep and set my apply mode to add. Now, since I'm going to be manually animating this sweep, I don't need to make changes to the movement type. But ignore alpha is a nice feature that I like to point out because it disables alpha for the suite. We're not going to use it on this instance, but we will come back to it later. I like to point it out because it is very, very useful and will create some interesting effects. Now, by default, the angle of the sweep is set to 45, but if I want to adjust it, I can do that here. The sweep itself is pretty big, so I'm going to actually reduce the intensity and glow amount to rein that in just a bit. That looks good. Lastly, I want to keyframe this animation starting around the one second mark. I can use either the center X and Y parameters, or I can simply use the on-screen widget to set my endpoint. Since I'm only going to move this along the X axis, I'll set a linear keyframe at around the one second mark and move the sweep over here. 
Then I'll jump forward to about 220, set a hold keyframe, and move the sweep off to the right. And there you go. But the next thing that I want to do is add a glow light to my text. I'll bring the master blur down a bit and increase the threshold a bit, and you know what? Let's keyframe our intensity value. Around 2 seconds, I'm going to set a linear keyframe value at around 7, and then I'll move forward a bit and bring that down to around 2. I'm going to end with a hold keyframe. And that's all there is there. Next, let's look at this hash mark. I want to create a compound glow effect here so that the light bleeds into the main text. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually add two separate instances of glow light to our hash mark. For the lower glow in the stack, let's bring down the master blur to around 12 and set that threshold to around 0.17. For our upper glow, let's bring that intensity way up to around 20. Incidentally, these are values that I'm personally using, but I do encourage you to do your own thing and experiment. The important thing to take away here is that you want to play with the blur and threshold to really refine your glow. Next, I want to add some streaked lighting to the whole scene, so let's apply one last glow light, this time to the scene itself. To create the streaks, what I want to do is I want to push that master blur up pretty high. I'm talking really high, into the 400s. Now this is going to create a very diffuse glow. But when I come down to the blur Y and bring that all the way down, the blur is going to be restricted to the X axis, which is going to create these really nice streaks. Now let's adjust the threshold a bit and bring up the overall intensity. And let's mix this back a bit and blend it in with the original. By doing so, as our light sweep moves across the text, we're going to get these interesting streaks of light around the edges of the text. And it looks pretty cool. Now before we go back to Vegas, I want to animate this on and off, and since this tutorial is really about shaders, we're going to do it with some shader style. First thing I want to do, let's add a blur to the entire scene, placing it above our glow, and change the type of blur to spiral. Now spiral blurs are cool, and if I adjust the rotate parameter, I can create this nifty swirly look. But what I really want to do is adjust the zoom blur. Now let's set a decelerate keyframe at the very, very beginning and zoom all the way out. I'm going to jump forward about 14 frames and set a hold keyframe and bring that value back to zero. In fact, you know what? Let's add another blur shader above that and change the type to directional. This is going to blur the image along a specific angle. Now we can keep it at its default rotation, but let's set another decelerate keyframe at the very beginning, crank that blur all the way up to max, jump forward about 10 frames, and set the hold keyframe to zero. And when I play that back, that's looking pretty great. Now something cool I can add is a bit of a light distortion behind the text. Now there's going to be a lot going on visually with the vortex in the background, but I want to try something cool here. So what I want to do is I want to add a light sweep shader, but I want to place it between my directional and spiral blur tracks. Now remember earlier I mentioned that we could change the type of sweep? Let's do this and change it to noisy. And I'm also going to click Ignore Alpha so that my sweep fills the entire scene. And you know what? Why don't we change the color? Hey, we're doing Doctor Who, so let's do TARDIS Blue. Now by default, the angle is set to 45, so let's adjust that to about 90 degrees so it goes horizontally across my scene. And you know what? Let's play with the width a bit, bring it up to around 9-ish, you know, something like that. I'm also going to play around with the noise settings to find something that really looks good. You know, maybe decrease my scale a little bit, adjust the X and Y offsets. Now if I increase the intensity, the noise pattern will become a bit more pronounced. But when I play it back, however, you can see that the animation is really fast. So what I want to do is pull back on that speed value. I'm going to bring it down really low. I'm talking really low. Maybe to around, you know, like 0 0.04, something like that. I mean, you know. So we play that back, and that's a lot better. Lastly, I want to adjust the mix. It's right now it's right on top of everything, and I want to blend it in with the overall effect. So I can increase my mix a little bit, and that looks good. When I play it back, fantastic. Okay, as one last final touch, I want to add in some camera movement. With my scene selected, I'm going to go to about the 2, 220 mark and select the camera tab. I'm going to look at the zoom value. I want this, uh, this effect to zoom towards the camera. So I'm going to set an acceleration keyframe on the zoom, 
and jump forward in my timeline to about five seconds. And I'm going to set a hold keyframe. And you know what? Let's crank that value all the way to the max. Now what I want to do, like I said, is have this text zoom past the camera, but it looks like at maximum zoom, there's still a part of it in the frame. So to fix this, I'm going to go to the container position tab, and just as I did before, I'm going to set an acceleration keyframe right on my position Z. Jump forward about five seconds, and bring that value down until my text has fully animated off the screen. And when we apply that right back to Vegas and play it back, there you go. Your very own Doctor Who inspired titles, all with a single effect inside of Vegas. And honestly, that's all there is to it. I'm Vin Morreale with Boris Effects, and for more great tutorials, don't forget to check out the Boris Effects website. Take care.